In January of 2024, over 2,700 AI researchers predicted the full automation of all human work. White collar, blue collar, specialized, skill based, generalized, yes, all work by the year 2100. If we cross reference that by the growth of technology and how ahead of time these innovations in the technology space are, we're looking at advances that are 50 to 80 years ahead of predictions. And Ray Kurzweil, one of the most accurate so-called futurists out there, has said that we're going to see AGI, artificial general intelligence by 2029. In one of my recent videos, I went over the novel idea of a UPD, a universal productivity dividend, a potential solution in a post AGI world to take the profits from full job automation and the productivity that will come from robots, not humans, and give it back to the human race. That idea, a universal productivity dividend, was 100% originated in ChatGPT 01 with reasoning at the end of a lengthy discussion about how UPD could work. When I asked it, what are the chances of being able to implement a UPD across the world by 2030? It told me the chances of implementing universal productivity dividends by 2030 across the world are less than 1%. So then I asked it this, Give me another scenario for rebuilding the economy and redistributing the profits from 100% of jobs automated. Give me something that could actually work. And here's what it gave me. A universal basic income supported by a sovereign wealth fund. We're going to go over what this is and if it's something that is actually viable for the post-labor society we are headed into with the automation of all human labor. We're going to look at this ChatGPT proposed solution and see if it could actually work. Welcome. If you're new here, or if you've seen my videos before, I'm Julie McCoy, the president of Brandwell, an all-in-one AI-powered growth platform that replaces entire marketing teams and makes brand authority and website traffic as simple as pushing buttons. But you actually get fact-based, high-quality, human-like content that will resonate with your audience and build your brand. I sold a 100-person human writing agency to join the new age of AI. I knew that content would be automated. And when I found Brandwell, I pitched the founder, Justin McGill, and asked him if I could join the platform he was building, believing it to be my replacement. Now I get to work full-time in AI. I absolutely love what I do, and I bring Bring you the inside of what I see coming towards us at full speed as we live in the epicenter of the AI age. If you enjoy optimizing your life, maximizing for the greatest ROI, not just financially, but in health, joy, happiness, wellness, you and I are aligned and I'm glad you're here. All right, so let's talk about the idea of a robot tax, aka UBI, Universal Basic Income, supported and funded by a sovereign wealth fund. I think that the greatest pitfall we need to consider when we're having discussions about Universal Basic Income, I'm going to put this in plain terms, is the danger of a totalitarian society, not unlike the one George Orwell painted in 1984. Humanity is the greatest obstacle to humanity, and it will always be the need for control coming from a place of greed, envy, personal motives, an unhealthy desire for riches. That will be a true nemesis and an obstacle I believe we have to overcome whenever we reclaim the world and we free ourselves up from the mundane. For the first time in the history of the world, World. Goods, services, output, all the things we need, whether it's flipping on a light switch and having electricity or clean water, clean foods to eat, all of that can be produced by the robots. It's only a matter of time till we're there. Some say it's just four to five years away when we live in a world where all work is done by robots and AGI is here with ASI on the near horizon. But does this mean we'll all be lazy couch potatoes? Absolutely not. In fact, if you study the true pilot programs of UBI and what has happened in rural and urban places UBI was piloted in, there's been a lot of success where people freed from the need to slave away for a paycheck at a job they don't like actually go pursue their their passions and what they love doing for the first time in their life, which opens up more drive to go and work at the thing they love. But the great danger in a global UBI situation is a totalitarian one world order that makes humanity dependent on a system not designed for their health, but designed for maximum profit back to an elite few. 
And that is the great danger I believe we have to avoid. Or we are looking at a very real 1984 Ready Player One dystopian that will be a hell to live in. The good news is, if you're here watching this with me in the time and place you are, that does not have to be our future. Our future is not written yet. And against all odds, I still believe in the good of humanity. I believe in breaking free from generational curses. Rewriting the story you've been told is true and questioning everything every narrative. Remember, we are the ones in control. We have the final say. The future has not been written. So the idea that ChatGPT gave me of a sovereign wealth fund is pretty interesting. It would come from automation profits taxation. No matter how you look at it, a tax of some sort on the profits we obtain from automation in major enterprises, corporations, businesses is going to have to occur so we can redistribute that back to the people. But if we look at it from the perspective of the future where no jobs are left, automation is a natural resource, cult cultivated the result of endless years on this planet, a culmination of our greatest inventions, then we all should stand to benefit. Even LLMs at large were built from the mass communication of humanity as a whole, aka the internet. Here's where the idea of a sovereign wealth fund gets interesting. And here's where I've added some thought to it beyond what ChatGPT gave me. We could put citizens in charge of the accountability and management of a diversified global portfolio portfolio and we could have AGI making the decisions on how to trade and make profits, turning the automation taxes into 10 times more wealth. So we take the taxes on top of the automation profits. We let AGI tell us how and where to invest that. We make that a diversified global portfolio and the dividends of that would go to the citizens of the world. This is a way to take the wealth generated from automation, stack it, grow it, and protect it for future generations to benefit from. We'd also be able to fund UBI itself for a countless period of time. True UBI is the idea of a universal coverage for all. And as dividends from a global diversified portfolio grow, we can turn UBI into UHI, a universal high income. Now, of course, we need some regulatory framework around this. South Korea, a leader in high-tech industries and the world's 13th largest economy, has been an example of a vibrant democratic society where the government was decentralized centralized. Of course, South Korea broke away from North Korea, one of the world's most repressed and isolated states with totalitarian government and control in the Korean War in the 50s. Now, since the pandemic, South Korea's economic growth hasn't been as great, but they still remain an example of giving the power of the government to the citizens. They have one of the highest engaged citizen participation programs, and they've done a great job at disclosing government budget information to the public. Their political system is a unitary presidential republic, and their current president is a big proponent of democracy and human rights. We have examples like South Korea, where there has been decentralization of government, not to the extent of incredible success, but some success. And I know some of you are going to comment, so I'm going to get ahead of your comment and tell you that yes, we are absolutely going to cover the United Federation of Planets, which is the interstellar government represented in Star Trek. I think some of the principles of freedom in the Federation in the Star Trek series are absolutely fascinating. So we're going to go over that in upcoming videos, but back to the topic. The idea of a sovereign wealth fund that I really like puts the power over that fund in the hands of the people. But my idea would be to have the governance of that fund and how we invest it into public trading. Well, let AGI do that. It'll make way better trades and financial decisions based on infinite amounts of data than a human ever could. If we grow a fund managed primarily by citizens, we can reinvest in sustainable practices for humanity, better education, universal health care, affordable housing, sustainable infrastructure projects that prioritize the quality of life. In Tempe, Arizona, I recently had the opportunity to walk through Ryan Johnson's cul-de-sac. That's all one word. The idea of a walkable, car-free neighborhood. And what I saw, I actually really liked. 
There were small mom and pop stores right there, owned by the residents that lived there. You could walk to a doctor's office, a quaint little candle store, a restaurant. You could play outdoor cornhole, go shopping for cute clothes, all within a few blocks of where you live. Now I own two cars, not saying you shouldn't own cars, but I think sometimes we've lost sight of the benefits of fresh air, being around each other, just being involved in the day-to-day -day of being a human. Remember, it's human being, not human doing. There's this idea portrayed to us oftentimes, but I think what we should do is get out there and see these concepts for ourselves. And I really like what Ryan Johnson was building with cul-de-sac. It was a comfortable, leisurely, enjoyable environment where you could spend a lot less time traveling, a lot more time just enjoying. Sustainable and leisurely housing environments like that are pretty unique. If you leave the US, you go overseas to Europe, you see a lot more focus put on walking to the local bakery, walking to the local market where they catch fresh fish every day. We've lost sight of that in a convenience-driven world here in the US that isn't necessarily engineered to improve our quality of life, our health, our wellness. The idea of a universal basic income itself is not corrupt. It's what world governments could and will do with this that can heavily corrupt it, make people dependent on an unhealthy system, and degrade humanity. But we don't have to be there. Since the 1980s, Alaska has distributed annual dividends to their residents from oil revenues. That is a land of oil. So they take those natural resources and redistribute it back to the people. Norway does something similar with their rich resources of petroleum. Why not treat automation, which all of humanity stands to benefit from, the same way? I think it's time for policymakers to prioritize commissioning studies and research and test pilots of new economies that we can scale across the world. When we live in a post-labor society and we are in a paradigm, a place in time, where human productivity doesn't drive the world forward, but automation does. It's time for businesses to get with the times. I believe in automating as much processes as you can if you're a business owner and entrepreneur, because then you'll learn the benefits and the opportunities in this new age of AI. And then we, the people, citizens, need to stay informed and participate in discussions like the ones I'm having on a regular basis. How do we get ready for what is rocket propelling towards us. I'd love to hear from you in the comments what you think of this unique concept, UBI, funded by a sovereign wealth fund managed by the people, directed by AGI. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. As always, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you right back here, down the next AI rabbit hole.